All right. Our first question is from Zoe from D.C. Hey, Zoe, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, so my question is, I'm on phase two of um, MAPS Aesthetic. Um, so I just started it. And um, would you implement any cardio into it? Because um, I feel like I'm not doing enough sometimes. So that was my question. That's a, that's a really, really good question. But well, I'm, I need to ask you a few more things before. Yeah, what um, were you doing before MAPS? I, yeah, so first question I'm going to ask you is, is this your first MAPS program or did you start with MAPS Anabolic? Like, What's your fitness history before? No, this is my first. Okay. And this then, is my first MAPS program. Now, were you working out a lot before MAPS Aesthetic? Yeah, I've worked out um, for a while now. I uh, grew up with gymnastics, and then I got oh. into lifting heavy, um, did kind of powerlifting-ish, and then just bodybuilding-ish type workouts. Cool. Now, what, what have you seen so far performance and, I guess, uh, just visual changes since you started MAPS Aesthetic? Um, so actually my lifts have gotten, um, have went up a lot. So a few years ago, I was in a really bad accident and, um, I broke my pelvis and, uh, I basically broke my back also. Um, so I had to start all over again. So I haven't lifted this heavy in a while. And, um, last week I got up to 225 on deadlift. Wow. Um, yeah, it's almost 200 on squat. So, and I haven't done those numbers in years. So, it's done great for me. That's awesome. awesome. That's excellent. Okay, so you're you're stronger. Has your body weight changed at all? Um, I'm not sure. I don't really weigh myself. Or I don't even have a scale actually. But um, I feel like I'm getting tighter. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel like you're getting bigger, or do you think you're staying the same, or getting smaller? The reason why I'm asking, I'm trying to see if you're if you're uh, burning any body fat while getting stronger. Um, I, I don't know if I'm just feeling tighter because I'm lifting heavier or, st you know, kind of staying the same. I don't see anything drastic right now. Okay. And then do you know how many steps you're taking a day? Do you have any, any idea of tracking? Well, that? that's the thing. My job, I'm kind of sedentary depending on the day. Um, so I work, you know, with computers. Um, so that's the one thing, like the time I do go outside is with my dogs, but you know, that's not going to add up to like 10 thousand steps. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I would start with that. I would start with trying to get your steps, um, to increase at first track them, see where you're at and then bump them by 25 to maybe 50%, depending on how low they are. So if your steps are like 6,000, that's okay. Yeah. To, to, mm -hmm. It's okay to bump them up to about 10,000 steps a day. Now, the second part I want to address is how you said that you feel like you can do more. If you're getting stronger, if your performance is improving, that's the metric you need to measure. Now, considering your background in gymnastics, from my experience, I've trained uh, gymnasts in the past, and uh, I, I, it's one of those sports where they train. You train a lot, um, and you really, yeah. you really push your body's uh, recovery ability. You push your capability, and so that might have skewed your your perception of what is enough training. Does that does that resonate with you? Yeah, I always feel like you know especially on um, the focus days, like, I'm just like, oh, that's it. Like, you know, I, I feel like there's more in the tank. I need to like push myself. Um, I know that's not always good. You know, in the past that's hindered my progress if I, you know, go too far. Um, but it's just that feeling that I have. So that, that's also a great place where to start to build the steps in, right? Because the focus sessions are a lot shorter than your foundational days, right? So one of the things that I like to do with yeah. clients that are following MAPS Aesthetic is to build like a, a walk into that workout. So you go do your focus session for 20 to 30 minutes, and then you walk post-workout for 30 minutes to boost your steps. My goal is always with my clients to increase steps over time, whether it be walking the dog or you know 10 minutes after your meal or 15 to 20 minutes post-workout, and keep trying to increase just your, your daily movement through steps before we start to push, mm -hmm. push on a piece of cardio equipment. And then once we move into a place where you look at me as a client, you go, okay, Adam, I'm, 
I'm walking the dog in the morning. I'm walking after my meals. I'm doing on focus days. You know, I'm doing 15, 20 minutes of, of car or walking after after I work out, and I'm kind of peaking out at you know 10 or 12,000 steps a day. Now maybe what we'll do is post workout on either foundational days or focus days. We might do like a 15 to 20 minute like hit session of cardio post workout. But I would I would progress you that way week over week for the next four to six weeks before we even consider starting to really. Do- Have you been tracking your calories, Zoe? Um, I haven't. <laughs> I eat pretty intuitively. I mean, I pre- eat pretty healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like sometimes I don't eat enough. It's not like I, I'm not eating anything too bad, but um, I know I have trouble eating enough sometimes, which for me, it um, messes up. You know, like I'll actually gain weight if I don't eat enough food. Mm. You know, I, here's another question. You, you mentioned you had an accident and you recovered from that. Do you have mm-hmm. do you have any issues with mobility, rotation, um, any any issues with mobility in the hips? I know you said your pelvis uh, and your back were affected. Yeah, I, that was probably my first big feat um, trying to get back to that. Especially, um, it was almost like when Adam he's talking about his Achilles for a while. I couldn't walk for three months, so um, it was just so hard going from being able to do so much to nothing so i started from you know scratch basically i started like i was five years old again Mm. um so mobility it's actually um bad for me in my upper body than my lower body now um i get really stiff my upper back my shoulders can um stiff up really easily you said something else that i think that uh we have to be careful of which is really common with clients Uh, you you address that you might be uh under eating sometimes and that's where we can get Uh in, in a lot of trouble if we start adding uh, cardio into your routine. Um, it was a great question by Justin to ask kind of where your nutrition was because the last thing we want to do is to be under consuming on nutrition and then also pushing and doing cardio because all that's going to do is tell your body to conserve energy and you're going to end up uh, going the opposite direction you really want to go. So much better off trying to add steps and walking and get to a mm-hmm. place where, uh-huh. you, where you feel good uh, as far as what your calorie intake is. Last thing you want to do is have low calories and then also push the body cardiovascularly. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have one quick question. Okay. Um, what do you guys suggest after um, aesthetic? Okay, so so with- that's actually great because I was going to comment and say that um, you know mobility work uh, burns calories like walking, mm-hmm. and you can kind of you mm-hmm. can you you in my opinion based off of what you've said if you're with your history, it might be more beneficial to add mobility instead of adding steps mm-hmm. um, because now you're improving mobility. Plus you're moving, so you're burning those extra calories. Yes. And then the next program I would recommend is uh, MAPS Performance, hands down, which does both. You're going to get those aesthetic benefits that it sounds like you're looking for, but you get that yeah. added benefit of performance and uh, mobility um, into your routine. So I would say that MAPS Performance would be a wonderful transition for MAPS Aesthetic for you. Yeah. Okay. That sounds great. Awesome. Love it. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you so much. Yeah, you know it's um uh one of I I remember this as a trainer and it was all it was when it first happened to me it was so strange because I thought that ex athletes would be the easiest clients to train. Oh no, it's the opposite. Yeah. They're they're the hardest because they have this perception of intensity and how they should feel during a mm-hmm. workout that was that comes from their years of competition and it's so hard to train them appropriately especially when they're. Yeah you know, beginner, intermediate, or just not as conditioned as they were back when they oh, were. Oh, yeah, and they can work through the pain. And so yes. it's a lot of times, uh, you know, you have to really spend some time repatterning a lot of these movements and things to make them beneficial again. So that way you're still progressing forward. I- I'm so glad Justin asked the calorie question too, because that changes the, the response to this question also. Right. Because totally. if you got somebody, you know, so the listeners understand, if you got somebody who's, say, eating – 1300 to 1500 calories and they're all they're doing is weight training they don't move very much and they're building strength things are going good and then they want to add cardio like this and then all of a sudden she starts doing 
30 minutes to an hour of, you know, semi-intense or intense cardio every other day or every day, what ends up happening, that person who's only eating 13 to 1500 calories, their body- You start losing muscle. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And so um, great question by Justin, because I definitely wouldn't want her doing cardio yet, not until we get her calorie intake up into a place where I feel good about her starting to push her body intensely like that. The best way to go right now is purely just walking. Yeah, mm -hmm. And it's this is why it's so important, if there's any trainers listening, to keep asking questions, because from what I've experienced with athletes, and especially gymnasts, Gymnasts, uh, you know, we, it, Justin commented that athletes work through pain. Gymnasts are the kings and queens of that. I mean, mm -hmm. this is, you will hardly find a competitive gymnast that doesn't have some kind of chronic injury that they continue to train through. I, you know, it brings back memories of the 1996 Olympics with what's her, you know, I think it was Strug was her last name and she did that oh, pole right. and she just landed with a <laughs> busted ankle oh, man. to win. They train uh, this way. So, and, and then here's the other part. You should feel like you have more in the tank. Like when you're done with your workout, you should feel like you can do more. You yeah, should it charged not, you up. Yeah, you should not feel like you're done and you can't do a single thing extra. That's well, not the point. Well, I do think it's really common with our MAPS aesthetic because those focus sessions are a little short, mm -hmm. right? And so you, you kind of either one, you end up wanting to lift more, which I know a lot of people do that even though they don't mm -hmm. follow protocol. But in a perfect world, that's what I would just have somebody just go get on the treadmill and walk for the rest yeah. of the 30, 40 minutes. Just get some, especially if, you know, like she said, I have a very sedentary job. Mm -hmm. If you've got a very sedentary job, job and you're not getting a lot of movement, then you hit those three days a week when you're hitting focus sessions for 25 minutes and you spend the other time walking yeah. on the treadmill. You got to figure out how you're going to add in more activity throughout right. your day. Yeah, but how about those straight gains? Huh? It's uh, I, I love hearing that. Oh, yeah. It's so common, especially after phase one of MAPS Aesthetic. Well, that's another saying. great point too. It's like, man, it, it, if I have a client who's telling me that, we're probably not making much adjustments. No. Mm -hmm. You know, if anything, it's trying to increase calories. And so what I would love to do or have someone like her do is like, okay, let we figure, let's just say, because oh, she didn't know her exact steps, but let's pretend she's stepping 6,000 steps a day and she's asking this question. Mm -hmm. My goal would be, okay, let's increase your calories by about 250 a day. And now I want you to get to, you know, nine to 10,000 steps every single day, hoping that that extra movement kind of cancels out mm -hmm. those extra calories. We build our metabolism up. That's where I'd ideally be with someone like that.